it's not your fault that the truck was there and that we had to go over the curb. Yeah, Chris isn't going to see it like that, is he? He'll understand. Gina, he's not going to find out, okay? Hey, Sam. Have you spoken to Wayne? What do you say? Is it right with him? It's cool. He reckons he can get an engine in by tonight. All you have to do is pick up the car at the garage tomorrow. Yeah, I'll tell her. Thanks. What's going on? Uh, bit of a problem. Um, don't know re really where it is. Well, who does? Um, you better speak to Wayne about that. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, but he's not in at the moment. It's Chris's car. It's been stolen. Ha <laughs> ha, Sam. Stolen. Steve. G'day. High finances, eh? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, investment portfolios. I'm on their mailing list. I can't even balance my own checkbook. I'm impressed. Really? Really? Hmm. It's a madhouse out there today. Yeah, everyone seems to be coming down with this flu. Not too bad in theatre, though. Mm, half your luck. Hey, what's the matter with your arm? Oh, that. You know Mrs Blanchard? Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Well, we did a veins yesterday. How is she? She's fine. But when she was coming to and post-op, she just thought she was the Sheena, queen of the jungle. <laughs> Are you kidding? I've got the scars to prove it. <laughs> what did you do? Well, there was this photo up by a bed. I think it was of her daughter and grandchildren, so I took her down to the recovery room. Oh, did it work? Yeah, it seemed to help. Great. No, no, I mean it. That's what nursing is all about. Don't get too carried away. True. I think it's fantastic, Sarah. No, what is? The way Sarah dealt with Mrs. Blanchard. Oh, yeah, I heard that she was ready to go ten rounds with a Vander Holyfield. <laughs> How is she now? Good as gold. Great. So, uh, Steve, you changed your mind? Mm hmm? Well, I thought you'd given it up as a lost cause. Uh... I'll leave you two wheeler dealers to it. <laughs> See you, Steve. See ya. How come everyone's giving me such a hard time? Steve, you're the one who said you were giving up, and here you are hanging on her every word. Admit it, you've got it bad. Give me a break, man. I'm just being polite. Well, you expect me to believe that? Absolutely. Look, as far as I'm concerned, Sarah is just, uh, just a colleague who has a gorgeous body. And that's all. <laughs> I've been waiting over there for nearly an hour. I'm sorry, Mr. Lawrence, but emergency patients come first. <laughs> I haven't seen any emergencies. Besides, I'm crook. I bought up a golden flame as big as a rat. Oh, charming. Thanks for sharing that with us, Mr. Lawrence. All I want is something for this blasted flu that shouldn't take all day. The truth is, Mr. Lawrence, there's not much the doctor can give you for the flu. If you want my advice, you're better off taking garlic and horseradish tablets and going to bed. You and Dr. Gurley? No. Well, I'll let the doctor decide what's best for me. Thank you very much. Dead hippie. You're asking for trouble telling the patients then? Well, it's true. Most of these people would be better off staying home in bed. It's not our place. I've told you before. Thank you. Isn't that true, Hone? What's that? That there's not much you can do for the flu except bed rest. And plenty of fluids, that's about it, I'm afraid. See? But it is better to see someone, just in case. See? Marge, I beg you, let my next patient have something different. Anything. Uh, ingrown toenails, brain tumour, spastic colon. Sorry, Chris, you'll just have to take the next in line. Well, I reckon it's statistically impossible for my next patient to be a flu case. You reckon? Definitely, mate. We're talking astronomical odds here. I mean, when have you ever treated 13 straight <coughs> cases of the flu? Uh, never. Exactly. Couldn't happen. I bet you 10 bucks. Mate, mathematics, law of averages. Believe me, it couldn't happen. I believe you. Ten bucks. Okay, March, do your worst. Uh, Mr. Dobronowski? Thirteen's uh, always been an unlucky number for me. <laughs> Mr. Dobronowski, uh, Dr. Ropata, how are you feeling? Oh, lousy. <laughs> Uh, 
Take a mild analgesic, something with paracetamol in it. Drink plenty of liquids, fruit juice, water, and if you can, stay in bed. And that's We're it. afraid so. This influenza is a virus, and as yet we haven't any drugs that are effective against it. You know, what about this headache? I feel real lousy. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Believe me, in a couple of days, the headache, shivering, fever will all be gone. Yeah, I hope so. So you're out here on holiday? Yeah. What, from Poland? No, Sydney. Yeah, too bloody cold in Poland. Great way to spend a vacation, eh, Doc? And this address, it's... It's uh, my brother. I'm staying with him. He's got this blasted thing, too. Yes, it's a nasty one this year. Very infectious. I'm supposed to be going home tomorrow. Any problem getting on a plane with this thing? No, it should be all right. Uh, your ears aren't blocked. With a bit of luck, hopefully you'll be feeling a bit better by then. Yeah, I hope so. Couldn't feel much worse. Right. Better keep her on alley obs until her breathing is improved. The push fluid, she's a bit dehydrated. Okay. Nurse will come back in a little while to check on you. Just try and get some rest. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. <sighs> it's people like that who are going to be hardest hit by this epidemic. Yeah. <sighs> Carrie, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. How are you finding things at home? I mean, now that Sarah's moved in. Why? Are you thinking of giving me the boot? No, no, of course not. I was just wondering. Have you found it's made things difficult? No, not at all. Nothing as far as I'm concerned. I probably should have asked you before I invited her. Meredith, it's your house. You can invite whoever you like. Well, Sarah can rub people up the wrong way. She tends to be fairly... Pig-headed? No, I was thinking strong-willed. Pig-headed is probably more accurate. Still, I suppose it's better than some doormat of a person. At least she doesn't suffer fools gladly. No, I guess not. Look, I realise things can't continue this way. I'll to talk to her about finding somewhere else. And don't do anything on my account. I'm happy for Sarah to stay as long as she likes. Uh, Mr. Scott, would you go to the doctor, please? There you go. Thanks. Mr. Thomas, would you come with me? Hi, Steve. Hi. Cappuccino? Yeah, thanks. Hello again. Hey, it's okay. I had a shower this morning. <laughs> I've only got a sec. No point in sitting alone. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> Our breaks must be just out of sync. I always seem to be eating back as you're coming off. Yeah. I, how's Mrs. Blanchard? Oh, the wrestling granny. Butter wouldn't melt in the mouth. Amazing what lurks in the unconsciousness. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I, I had this patient once. That... Oh, look, sorry, I've got to go. I don't want Carrie breathing down my neck. I thought you were out of her jurisdiction. Since when has that stopped her? <laughs> See ya. Bye. What are you standing up for? The lady just left the table. You never get up when I leave. <laughs> oh, don't say a word here. I can't stand it anymore. Has something happened? <laughs> Sarah. What about Sarah? She's drunk me out of my mind. What, you don't like her? I'm crazy about her. Then what's the problem? She seems friendly enough. She must like you. That's the whole point. She only ever wants to be friends. She's got this rule about never dating anyone she goes to work with. Uh, agony. Rules are made to be broken. Well, this one's impossible. I mean, how could she be interested in me? She's so sophisticated and so intelligent. And Steve, I stop your wallowing. If you want to get anywhere with Sarah, you've got to be more positive. Yeah, well, it's really hard to be positive when every time you try, you, you end up falling flat on your face. Look, everyone has their setbacks, OK? I know it's hard, but you've just got to not let it get to you. Any time you feel low or negative, you've got to go to your happy place. Your happy place? Yeah, some happy memory from when you were a kid. And most people have forests or parks or stuff like that. Mine's Speedway, because I used to go with when I was a little kid. Brum, 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 brum. I just love the sound of those engines. Yeah, right. Look, Steve, it really works. Positivity is infectious. Besides, what have you got to lose? Mm, that's a point. Visualise your goal and then go for it. Sarah and me, huh? If that's what you really want. That's what I really want. Then do it! Yeah, I suppose it's worth a try. Don't try, succeed. Sarah and me, be positive. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna go in there and yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sweep her off her feet. Yeah, right. I'll check you later. Thanks, Gina. Sure. Yeah, a couple of days in bed, and I'm sure you'll feel a lot better. Um, just see Mrs. Nielsen about the account, okay? Here we are. Right. Oh, 
Oh, there you go, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Ruth, you want an arm and a leg just for telling me to take two painkillers and go to bed? That's a standard consultation fee, Mr. Lawrence. Do you want to fix it up now? No, I do not. I'd have been better off taking your advice after all, girlie. Where'd you say I could get those uh, garlic and... Uh, oh, what spread it? it. At the health food shop and the mall down the road. Right. I'll know not to waste my time in the future. Highway bloody robbery. Kirsty, what exactly did you say to Mr Lawrence? Just that garlic and horseradish tablets are good for the flu. Oh, I see. And are you in the habit of prescribing alternative treatments for our patients? Well, I just thought since we were so flat out and there's not much that can be done for the flu. Every patient you turn away has lost revenue for the clinic. I didn't really think about it like that. Yes, well, you should. Because if we lose too much revenue as a result of your uh, advice, we may not be able to afford two receptionists and I might be forced to turn you away. Is that clear? Yes, Dr McKenna. Good. <laughs> Don't you say. Hi. Hi. Busy? Oh, not bad. Me neither. <laughs> oh, Meredith was saying that you'd been working in Indonesia. Did I tell you I've been there too? Working in Jakarta. Uh, no, no, no. Holiday in Bali. Oh, it's beautiful there. Yeah. Especially in the mountains. The mountains? You know, around Kintamani. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Can't believe it. Some people go there and just lie on the beach. <laughs> Some people. Do you go to a bud? Uh, you know, where the artists are. Um, no, I was on a package tour. We sort of stayed mainly in Kuta. Oh, it's a shame. I'll be at this back to recovery. Yeah, well, I'll probably see you later then. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, we'll see you next week then, Mrs Barnes. Oh, Sarah, have you got a minute? Yeah, sure. I think we need to talk about things at home. Why? What's the problem? Well, it's been a bit tense there lately. Oh, look, Meredith, if I've stayed my welcome, I'm going to move. I don't want to jeopardise our friendship. Oh, no, no, I know that. It's just that I... Well, I realise Carrie's not the easiest person in the world no, to I live with. I don't mind her. Well, I realise she can be difficult at times. Have you and Carrie had a falling out? No, no. Because if you have, you shouldn't be afraid to tell her. I mean, there's nothing worse than being uncomfortable in your own home. <sighs> If you're, you know, looking for another flatmate, and I'd be quite happy Oh, no, to... I didn't mean... I mean, only if you want. Well, yeah. Well, I'd better go. No rest for the wicked. I'll see you at lunch. Okay. Oh. Oh. I haven't got all day. I'm a regular patient. Sure, this flu is an epidemic. We didn't plan it. Then employ more staff. I'm afraid we're fairly busy at the moment. Good Lord. So how much longer am I supposed to wait? It's about, uh, waiting time's about an hour. An hour? I might as well go to the public hospital. But I'm sure we can fit you in. Just come along. Hello, Pamela. Look, I'm sure it won't take much longer. If you'd just like to take a seat, I'll be with you as soon as I possibly can. All right, Michael. Marge, this is hopeless. We can't have patients threatening to go elsewhere. Well, they keep coming in as fast as we can treat them. Faster. If we could just fill this out. We haven't even made a dent in the queue, and it's not as though we've had a major emergency or anything. Give me a look at this morning's patient list, Marge. Next. Make it a double, Kirsty. Michael, this is like cranking the handle and churning them out. It's a production line. Yes, how's it feel to be the Henry Ford of modern medicine? Mrs. Watson and Mr. Brooks. Gentlemen, there's no time for idle chit-chat. We've got patients waiting. Oh, that's good to see you haven't lost your sense of humour. You're an inspiration to us all. Here it is. Oh, good. Now, let's see what's been causing the hold-up. Nothing. Can you check B reserve? What's going on? She's trying to find some tickets. Yeah, tonight, tomorrow, for a concert? Time. Opera. Opera? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, well, look, thanks for trying then. Bye bye. No luck? No, unfortunately. Opera lover, eh? Yeah, it's one of my passions. I try to indulge myself whenever I can. Yeah, me too. An opera lover. Oh, <laughs> oh please. Okay, I'll go. Appreciate it. So you like opera? I want to pick it, Steve. Oh, no, no, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Have you seen this one? Turandot, that's the one they're doing now. No, no, I haven't. Not yet. Yes, their final night tomorrow night. Oh, is it? Bummer, I really want to see it. It's one of my favourite. Apparently it was a terrific production. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Terrific. Every time I hear Ness and Dorma, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up on end. Yeah, me too. My whole head. Wham. Looks like we're both going to miss out. Yeah, looks like it. Oh, hey, watch it there, young fella. No running around in here, eh? Hey? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's all right. No harm done. Plenty of energy at that age. Why walk when you can run? <laughs> I've written the name of Tommy's medicine on that piece of paper. The chemist will explain how to apply it. 
Yes, I understand. If you have any questions, you've got my phone number. Ring me up. Okay, I will. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Excuse me. Meredith, a word. I've been looking at this morning's patient list and I suggest you move your consultations along a bit. You what? Hurry things along a bit. The waiting room is overflowing. People are having to wait for up to an hour. Michael, I'll take as much time as needs to be taken. Yes, well, I think that 30 minutes with that last patient could be considered a bit excessive, don't you? That was three patients, three diagnoses. And on top of that, Mrs. Falatolo couldn't speak terribly fluent English, which slowed things down. And if I hadn't discovered that Tommy had a blocked eustachian tube, he could have ended up with a severe hearing disability. Is that what you want? Of course it isn't. Then let me do my job. I've never compromised quality of care. And I'm not about to start doing so today. Meredith, I am concerned about the backlog. And Chris and Hone are seeing twice as many patients as you are. I'm sorry, I didn't realise we were working on a quota system. I've been working flat out for the last four hours. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and get a cup of coffee. Because I probably won't get time for lunch. An unexpected invitation will come your way, but beware of train travel in the colour blue. That's interesting. Ha. Huh. Those things are written for people with the IQ of a fence post. What's your sign, Carrie? At a guess, I'd say cancer the crabby. At a guess, I'd say you're wrong. How anyone can believe that a random selection of stars can have any effect on their destinies is beyond me. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio. You're not Scorpio, are you? Virgo. Ha! Figures! Listen to this. Jupiter causes problems for some Virgos. Exercise caution and friendship. <laughs> That's right on the knocker. Fits almost anyone at any time. Typical Virgo never admits they're wrong. I've been wrong plenty of times. Sarah, I thought you were an intelligent person and here you are reading that drivel. I like to keep an open mind. Open mind? Don't you mean empty head? Your moon sign would probably be very important. My guess is it's in Capricorn, the goat. Stop it! I'm fed up with this constant bickering, non-stop here and at home. It's driving me crazy. Well, why don't you grow up the pair of you? There, I've said it. It's out in the open. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you're upset. <laughs> well, I can't. Well, um, Meredith, we had no idea. Sorry. <laughs> you had no idea you were arguing. Well, what would you call it then? Ripping each other's throats out? No. Bantering. Well, friendly bantering. Well, if that's friendly, remind me not to bend with you guys. <laughs> We're sorry. We didn't mean to upset you. Well, I thought you hated each no. other. No! We got it really well, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Well, you had me fooled. <laughs> <laughs> Won't happen again, I promise. I guess it's because we have fairly similar personalities. Who? You and me. You're kidding, we're nothing like each other. Oh, well, yes we are. Chalk and cheese. Oh, come on. If you just took a good hard look at yourself I'll for a myself. change. I'm happy with myself, thank you very you're much. You're happy with yourself? Yes, you and with your reading examination. Me? Yeah. Excuse me. You're reading the horoscope. Well, you should try this sometime. You can't have a chalk. Oh, chalk with your courier. The and what about your gun? Hey, listen. Apparently, he thought he had the flu. Headaches, high temperatures, vomiting. His neighbor called us when she found him unconscious. Okay, let's have a look at him. Stiffness in the neck here. Do we know of any recent neck injury? I asked the neighbors about any accidents or illnesses. She wasn't aware of any, just this flu. I think we're dealing with something more than just the flu. It looks suspiciously like meningitis. Viral? I'm not quite sure. We'll do a lumbar puncture. I think we'll know what we'll be dealing with. Yeah. Hey, Sarah, Sarah! Wait they up. want me in theater, I've left. No, 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 it's nothing like that. I, I got some. Some what? Some tickets for the opera tomorrow night. How did you get those? I heard you can't get them for love or money. So, do you want to come along? Uh, I'd love to. You would? <laughs> of course. Look, how much do I owe you? Nothing. It's, it's my shout. No, I can't let you do that. It must have cost you a fortune. No, no, she's sweet. Don't be silly. I insist. The truth is, they didn't cost me anything. How come? I just uh, called in a few favours from my connections in the opera world. <laughs> you dark horse. <laughs> I'm impressed. So, you coming? Well, I mean, if there's no one else that you want to take. <sighs> Are you kidding? I'd love to. Great. I'll see you tomorrow then. Okay, I'll Thanks. see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> oh, 
You know, they should call this the Shortland Street Flu. We must have seen every victim there is in the last 24 hours. <laughs> I'm in my happy place, I'm in my happy place, I'm in my happy place, I'm in my happy place. Sounds like you should be in the funny farm. <laughs> this, this is me. And this, this is Sarah. <laughs> Steve, dude. Where are you taking her? <laughs> the opera. A reserve. Nothing but the best for my darling. Opera, Steve. Oh, I didn't know you were a buff. What are you seeing? Durandot. It's a brilliant production. What's it about? Uh, it's about this car, a Nissan Dorma or something. <laughs> Steve, I, I don't think it's about a car. No? Huh? Oh, well, I'll get a CD by one of those fat Italian guys on the way home. By tomorrow night, I'll know every single word. How much did those tickets cost? 200 bucks. Ooh. This is me. This is Sarah. Worth every cent. Mm-mm-mm. 200 ah. bucks? Man, are you crazy? What about the rent, the power bills due again, and your share of the veggies? Oh, Sammy, 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 come on here. We're talking about love and about <laughs> art. Can you tell me your name? Do you know what day it is today? Get up, please, nurse. Thank you. Can you tell me your name? It's been confirmed. Uh, it's a big meningitis. That's usually fatal, isn't it? It can be. We'd better start info to us and B now. Okay, I'll do half hour the ops. Do we know this guy's name? Yeah, um, it's foreign, a bit of a mouthful. Dobrow. Dobrow something. Dobronowski? How'd you know? I didn't. I had a guy in this morning with the same name. With him? No. Couldn't be a coincidence. Uh, the guy I saw was staying with his brother. He's on holiday here. What's his address? Uh, Kohata Street. Why? What was wrong with him? Flu, same as everyone else. Except he was complaining of headaches. Damn! He was flying home tomorrow. We better trace him quickly, otherwise he'll be going home in a body bag. Is it you or is it me? Lately I've been lost, it seems I can't for changes what I need. If I'm looking for a chance for a dream, shall I street? Taking down the whole my place, yesterday's another place, just living for the times we've seen. When the writing on the wall says I'll be. If you want to find a way of searching for another world, it's hard to see. This program was made with the help of your broadcasting crew, so you can see more of news here on the air.